Hi guys, welcome back to Mr Mechanical. So today the plan is to start putting the new spindle onto the Denford. Um, in the last video on the Denford I talked about putting this um, palm router onto the Denford. I was waiting for a part and my friend, um, yeah, my, uh, my friend uh, Johnny, he kindly machined a part for me. So uh, thanks very much to Johnny in Northern Ireland. Uh, he made this adapter plate for us, which will be allow me to fix the router to the spindle. So that's what we're going to do: get this part fitted, and uh, hopefully we can get this machine up and running again. So I just thought I'd show you some of the parts that I'm stripping out. Obviously, we've got the motor that went bust. Um, got the motor case in there and the internals out of it so they're going got rid of them um, pulley got the spindle spindle assembly um, I'll probably put some of these parts up for sale um, there's nothing wrong with that it was the motor that went so I've got that and the um, most taper one collet chuck in there that I no longer need. This is the block that came off the column of the machine which is basically what this part is now going to replace. Um, it's just a little bit wider so it can accept the clamp for the router um, and there's some odd bits and pieces here they're all going to be disappearing and all we need is this block uh, we have a key way to go in which just keeps that block parallel with the column and then obviously we've got our router as well that will be fit into this new part so stripping the parts off the column was straightforward as I said we had this block uh, which was slid over that pin there and then there was grub screws yeah so basically there was a grub screw that locked that block in bit onto that pin there and the profile of that pin looks like that it's got a bit of a bit of a V cutting around it just for the grub screw to lock the part into and so the new part it just slides over that so we've got the new part there with the keyway in the top and all I need to do is simply slide that over there get that keyway to line up and then in the top of there we've got a new threaded hole and a new grub screw in there so we just need to tighten that grub screw up until it locks on that pin it's an M8 thread in there so I did have to get a new grub screw because it was imperial on the previous setup so that's locked up nice and tight that's not going to move that's great yeah Johnny did a really nice job of machining that part really happy with it so the next thing to do is to fit the palm router on onto that block that Johnny's made these four screws line up with the holes in there so it should be straightforward just take two out for now So I've got two located there, we'll just put the last two in. I was saying in the last video that um, after I bought this 240 volt corded router, I was watching a NYC CNC video and they were talking about how you could use a cordless one, a DC one that you could then use with a variable speed controller, which I wish I'd watched that video before I went and bought this, but 
this will do me for the time being and uh, swapping this over will be an easy upgrade in the future now that I've got these parts so if you have any problems with this I'll just swap over to a cordless machine a cordless router so I'm just nipping these up um, I'm just thinking that in the future um, before I use it too much I'll just get some Loctite because I don't want to put too much torque on them because of the, the threaded holes in the aluminium don't want to strip them but at the same time I don't want the vibration to bring them loose ok so there we have it easy um, it's great when parts fit well that solids that looks good ok so the next thing is to route this cable um, up all the way somewhere and then we can uh, have a go at getting it at the moment I'm just going to plug it straight to the mains and switch it on manually eventually I will look at using a 5 volt controlled relay to turn that on but that'll be something to maybe look at in the next video ok so the router is now fixed to the machine um, I've got that cable routed uh, somewhere where I'm happy so I'm going to just do a trial job as part of the end of this video uh, try and finish off the job I've got in there now it's the job that was in when the original spindle motor packed up so we'll see if we can get it finished first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zero or reference all the axis so all I'm doing now is I'm just uh, putting in some commands G0 Y0 just to make sure that's my my work reference is still set up right probably need to adjust them um, because of the new head well I definitely will on the Z axis so I'll bring that down okay so I've now got the X, Y and Z zeroed out I'll turn the router on and we'll see how it works Okay, so I've got that, uh, that job finished off. It's uh, from my sister-in-law's um, beauty room that she has at home. So that's just part of the sign that I've made there. It'll, it'll be backlit eventually. Um, but I'm quite happy with how the uh, router performed. Uh, the only thing I would say is it was very loud. I had it set on the highest speed, which I believe is 30,000 RPM. The other thing is I didn't adjust any of the G-code. I was only able to put the override on the feed up to 200% um, that might not have been enough um, to keep up with the 30,000 RPM just looking at the cutter it's a bit black on the end so it's it's got a bit hot but apart from that it works great it appeared to be uh, rigid enough so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at seeing what I can do to reduce the noise that's coming out of that machine I've ordered some sound insulation so it might be that I just need to insulate 
the cabinet that it's in. Um, and the other thing I want to do is now that I'm doing more work on hardwoods, I want to get an extraction system set up. Nothing massive, just be running some PVC pipe, connecting it into the cabinet of the Denford milling machine. I'll get it connected up to my table saw and I'll get it connected up also to the um, the work bee, the uh, ooze nest work bee when that arrives onto the router of that as well. Um, just keep the dust down um, and I'll just route some PVC pipe around the shed with the uh, vacuum connected up to it. Yes, yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, I'll have some more videos using the machine. I've got um, a bit of 3D adaptive machining to finish off. I've done a bit of a sculpture of a horse's head so I'll get a video up of that job. So uh, just uh, another thing I wanted to mention, my friend Jason, I've mentioned him before um, on my channel, he, uh, he helped me get my machine up and running when I had the initial problem with the control board. He's uh, got a channel and uh, he's uploaded a video recently, a really good explanation on feed and speed, so if that's something you're interested in, I'll put a link in the description below, so go and check him out. Also, I've received a sticker from Paul, the Knacklers Workshop, so uh, thanks Paul for that. Um, when I remember, I'll uh, send you one of my stickers and I'll put your sticker on my board with the rest of them. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, comment below and like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next time.